Recording audio in Adobe Audition might seem simple. There's a red record button for the job, but it takes more than just clicking on it. The final audio quality depends a lot on how well you record. This video will not only show you how to record but also how to get the best recording possible. I'll also explain how to get an audio file from your recording. If you're new to Adobe Audition, the interface might feel overwhelming. But don't worry, it gets easier once you get used to it. If your interface looks different from mine, you'll need to reset it to the default workspace. You can find the workspace options under the window menu. In this tutorial, I'm using the default workspace. The default workspace is great for beginners. Once you have more experience, you can explore other workspace options. Although workspace setup isn't part of the recording process, I mentioned it so you can follow along easily. If you're using the default workspace, your interface should look similar to mine. Now, let's move on to the next part of the recording process. The most important part of audio recording as a beginner is microphone selection. Many beginners make the mistake of recording with the wrong microphone. To select the correct microphone, go to the Adobe Audition settings. Your microphone can be selected from audio hardware. I am now in audio hardware. The currently selected microphone is shown in the default input. If I record now, the Scarlett 2i2 USB will be used for recording. If I want to choose another microphone, I have to just select it from the list. For example, if I want to use a MacBook Pro microphone for recording, I will click on it. If you change the microphone selection, you may see a warning message. This message is about channel mapping, which is likely unimportant for you. If you are using an audio mixer, the channel mapping may become important. In channel mapping, you can set which input you want to use in different channels. What is set by default works fine for usual voice recording. If you ever feel the need to record different inputs in different channels, channel mapping is the option to look for. We do not need to do anything with channel mapping. Click yes to continue. There are a few more things to understand about microphone selection. Sometimes, your microphone might not appear on the list. If your microphone is connected through an audio interface or mixer, the name of the interface or mixer will show up instead of the microphone's name. For example, I'm using a Sennheiser microphone, but its name doesn't appear in the list because it's connected through the Scarlett 2i2 audio interface. When I select Scarlett 2i2 USB, my Sennheiser mic is used for recording. If you're using a USB microphone, you will likely see the microphone's name directly in the list. It's important to know which name in the list corresponds to your microphone. However, there are times when your microphone doesn't show up at all, even if it's connected to your computer. If this happens, try restarting Adobe Audition. This should fix the issue and make your microphone appear on the list. If I recap what I said so far, it is just about clicking on the microphone name in the list. But there is another thing you should be aware of. You can see the Scarlett 2i2 USB appears twice in this list. At the top, it has the word system default before it. Both are indicating the same microphone, but the system default means it is also set as input device in my computer settings. If I choose any of the Scarlett 2i2 USB, I will use the same microphone for recording. However, the system default has a special meaning. To keep things simple, I am not discussing the details of system default. But I recommend checking the default input from Adobe Audition settings every time before you record. That will help you prevent the mistake of recording with the wrong microphone. If you are recording something important, there will be nothing more frustrating than recording with the wrong microphone. After setting the input, you'll see a default output option. This is the device used to play back audio after recording. Currently, my default output is set to MacBook Pro speakers. I can change this from the list. You'll also see the option labeled as System Default. The System Default output means that if I change the output device in my computer settings, it will automatically update in Adobe Audition. For example, if I switch my computer's output to external headphones, you'll see the change reflected in Adobe Audition as well. The key is to ensure the correct input and output devices are selected in Adobe Audition settings. If they're not, you can update them from the list. Once everything is set correctly, click OK to save your changes. For my setup, the input and output devices are now configured the way I want. I'll leave the other settings as they are, and click OK to proceed. The correct microphone is set, and now we can record our voice. Adobe Audition gives us two recording options, single waveform recording and multi-track recording. For this tutorial, we'll focus on single waveform recording. To begin, click the record button. A configuration window will pop up. Here, you can set some recording parameters. First, give your recording a name. I'll give it my test record. Don't worry too much about the name, you can always change it during export if needed. Next, let's configure the basic settings. Stick with a sample rate of 44.1 kHz. 
This is perfect for voice recordings. Using a higher sample rate won't improve quality noticeably, and it'll just create unnecessarily large files. On the other hand, a lower sample rate might lose some audio details. Most platforms also require 44.1 kHz, so it's a safe choice. For the recording channel, choose mono. This is ideal for voice recordings. Stereo is better for music or other special cases, but it may require additional setup. Mono keeps things simple. For bit depth, go with 32-bit float. While 24-bit is also good, 32-bit provides more flexibility during editing. This will ensure you get the best results. These settings should give you a high-quality recording. If your audio still doesn't sound great, the issue might be with your microphone or recording environment. For example, the microphone might not be good enough, or the room might have too much background noise. Once you've configured everything, click OK to start recording. As you record, you'll see the waveform appear on the screen. Keep an eye on the meter while you speak. The level should stay between minus 18 dB and minus 6 dB. If the levels get too close to 0 dB, your audio may clip or distort. Clipping is often impossible to fix or may not sound right even after editing. Please note that a good recording depends on many factors, such as the recording room, recording technique, microphone, and all the things I discussed in this video. If your recording is not perfect, try to find out the issue systematically. Always remember a good recording is the key to great audio. The recording is done, and I will play it back to check the quality. Welcome to this Adobe Audition recording tutorial. The goal of this recording is the volume level is not perfect as a final audio, but don't worry. You'll refine it during post-processing. The goal here is to capture the best raw audio possible, which you can enhance later with effects. I have other videos and courses on the details of post-processing. I will share the link in the description and pinned comment. After recording, you'll see the waveform. This can be edited just like text. For example, you can select and delete parts of the waveform you don't want. For more detailed editing tips, I have other tutorials linked in the description. Now, let's save the recording as an audio file. Go to the file menu and click save. You can keep the name you gave earlier or change it. I'll add final at the end of the current name, so it'll be called my test record final. Choose where you want to save the file. Currently, it'll be saved to the documents folder, but I'll select the desktop instead. Be sure to note the location so you can find the file later. You can also choose the file format from this dropdown. There are many different file format options here, but the most notable are MP3 and WAV. I recommend saving it as a WAV file since it's a lossless format and preserves the highest quality. Once you are done setting the options, click on Save. You can also select the file format from this dropdown. In any audio editing software, the same actions can be performed from multiple places. You can do it from the location you find convenient. There's an option to include markers or metadata. If you check this box, Audition will create an extra PKF file along with your audio file. The PKF file contains metadata but isn't necessary for playing or sharing the audio, so you can ignore it if you want. Once everything is set, click OK to save the file. I had set the save location as desktop. If I go to the desktop, you'll see the WAV file there. You can see the file, my test record final.wav. This file can be sent, uploaded, or used in a project as an audio file. You'll also notice the PKF file, but you don't need to do anything with this file. If you want the audio file to be shared somewhere, just send your WAV file or MP3 file. You've now learned to record audio and save it as a file using Adobe Audition. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. You are now ready for the next step, improving your sound. I have built some presets to help you do that faster and correctly. With these presets, your original recording will become professional quality. The presets installation is quite easy, and there is a detailed video in the description. Once the presets are installed, your voice will improve in one click. Your voice can become clear, rich, and full in a single click. You can even create a movie trailer-like demo using these presets. If you want a free demo with your voice recording, send me your voice, and I will send you a demo. You will find my email address in the description. I also have a better deal with the Adobe Audition bundle. With the bundle, you will get the presets and a top-quality Adobe Audition course. If you are into voiceover, audiobook narration, podcasts, or learning voice editing in detail, this course is for you. In addition to the presets and course, you will also get a custom EQ with a preset personalized to your voice. The bundle greatly discounts all these things. All the links are in the description and pinned comments. If you want to know more, please send me an email.